for today's special article and pseudo engagement week. In this, we will be presenting three cases. So, one of the cases are very uncommon cause of need and one is a very common cause. So, I begin with uh, case number one. The patient is a 60 year old male. He is a follow up case of advanced uh, suspected CAGD. The police store do not issue and the cystic artery The patient presented in the emergency with multiple episodes of brown colored BS vomiting in Medina for one day. An immediate uh, CT angiogram was ordered which showed uh, 10 into 6 and then cystic artery pseudonymism with hypotenuse contents in the duty human on non-contrast CT which uh, was suggested to have acute hemorrhage. There was also some mild free fluid in the abdomen. The patient was shifted to the vascular lab and digital angiography was done uh, which again confirmed the pseudonymism arising from a cystic segmental branch of cystic artery. So these are the images. This is the plain CT image showing hypertensive contents in the lumen besides some ear foci. The hypertensive contents are possibly due to hemorrhage and the ear foci are because of the fistula. The CT angiograph images show the pseudonymism arising from the cystic artery. Again the coronal image. Note in all uh, these images and that uh, the pseudonymism is supplied by the cystic artery, which is a very small caliber artery in this case. This is the GSA uh, run of the patient had a aneurysm and he was under evaluation. He was also planned for FNAC. Meanwhile, he presented with Medina and uh, uh, this bleed and um, the symptoms. This is the initial subtraction angiogram. Uh, we are able to see that uh, the catheter has been negotiated right from the C8 axis up to the hepatic artery proper. Beyond hepatic artery proper, we are able to see that a micro catheter is passing right into the right hepatic artery. And a contrast run has been taken right at the start of the right hepatic artery which is showing the anterior and the posterior branch. Also note that uh, there is a small color filling around globular structure. This is the pseudoaneurysm. I will play it again. Here we can see it in the video. This is the pseudoaneurysm. To note uh, especially is the, the lumen and uh, the caliber of the subline cystic artery. It is a very narrow Russell. Uh, only the advanced, recent advances in the interventional radiology in terms of hardware and the technique have made it possible to calculate such narrow caliber vessels. This is the super selective uh, calculation of the cystic artery. This is again the video. We can see the very narrow caliber 
uh, micro catheter passing into the cystic artery system and the pseudo aneurysm is filling. Uh, we can compare it with the rib size or the vertebral body height. See the vertebral body height or the rib size. We can imagine the, how narrow the catheter is. And uh, uh, in this patient, uh, glue was injected into the uh, pseudo aneurysm. And the post uh, procedure run, and this is the post procedure run. We can see that the glue, the cost of the glue, and that the pseudo aneurysm has been completely knocked off. This is the stem, we are seeing this uh, cystic artery stem. And uh, uh, to note in this image is one thing more that the right hepatic artery, the left hepatic artery are patent. There has been no obstruction to the hepatic artery and on the isolated, the pseudo aneurysm has been knocked off. So the, in uh, post procedure, the patient was hemodynamically stable. There was no drop in, in HB and the oral diet was starting. The patient was discharged. Patient is under evaluation and possibly uh, for FNAC. So a review of the literature reveals that cystic artery pseudo aneurysm remains a very uh, rare cause of the upper GI bleed. Only some 22 cases have been documented in the English literature. They develop primarily as a consequence of the adventitial damage and the thrombosis of the vasovasorum of the vessel, which results in the damage to the muscular and elastic components and the media and edema with infusing extravasation of the arterial blood. Progressive enlargement and the eventually day rupture. This can occur secondary to the inflammatory condition is also, for example, cholecystites or pancreatitis. Uh, sometimes due to malignancy, ability, trike manipulations, and sometimes also due to trauma. Cystic artery cell aneurysm is present usually with ability, colic, or obstructive jaundice in 60 or 70 percent of the cases, and in all the cases, they present with upper GI bleed, which may be in the form of hemobilia, hematemesis, and malina. And this triad of hemobilia, hematemesis, and malina is seen in 32 to 40 percent of the cases. So most patients have a history, uh, most patients have a history of acute cholecystitis or, or, or have undergone recent cholecystitis. Only nine cases have been reported in the literature which had um, cystic artery cystic aneurysm post cholecystitis uh, among these 22 cases. The mechanism in post cholecystitis patients is believed to be due to the direct vascular injury which may be due to the thermal while doing cautery or the erosion because of the clips or sometimes by leaking infection. Two cases have been reported uh, with associated uh, with xanthogranulomate cholecystitis. Although invasive digital subtraction, angiography and embolization remain, uh, remain the gold standard for diagnosis because they are very, um, it is sensitive up to 80 percent and has uh, detection rate in cases where the aneurysm sac is less than 10 mm. Diagnostic angiography can then be combined with therapeutic arterial embolization in the form, in the form of home injection, thrombin injection, glue or microcoilus, which can serve as a definite management. Or in cases where a surgery is planned after this, this can act as a bridge to the surgery. Yes, and embolization where possible, a uh, two stage approach should be adopted where the patient should be stabilized first, resuscitated, and embolization can be carried out, and uh, uh, subsequently, uh, elective surgical procedure may be done. The reported success rate of the angiographic control of the hemoglobin by transarterial embolization is 80 to 100 percent. These are the uh, cases which have occurred after the polystemy. Uh, note in all these, uh, most of these cases, coil embolization has been done. Uh, only two cases present where laparotomy was needed, and they uh, present a case which is from 1994, probably in the lack of hardware. However, uh, recent cases also there. Then we come to the case number two, which is uh, bleed again. In this case, the patient, Mr. A.K., is a 41-year-old male, occasional alcoholic and known uh, acute necrotizing pancreatitis. Uh, and he had undergone U.S.-guided cystogastrostomy for world of pancreatic necrosis. These are the images. Uh, this is the world of necrosis. And for this, he went for the U.S.-guided 
cystogastrostomy and is, this is a stent post procedure. But uh, one week later, upper NGI endoscopy showed an active bleed at the site of the stent uh, and an emergency CT angiography was done and it showed an active ooze which was seen as a, um, from a branch of the left gastric artery along the, along the wall of the stent. These are the images. This is the left gastric artery and this is the branch from arising from the left gastric artery which is bleeding here. These, these two dots are the actual extravasation here also. So again we can uh, see in these images that the supply to the pseudoaneurysm is a very very thin branch. And GSC again was ordered in this case. Uh, this is the angiogram run. This shows the left gastric artery. Here yeah, it is the left gastric artery. And this is the branch on the left gastric artery which is seen near the stent. Here again we can see on the new images that near the stent, uh, this thin branch of the left gastric artery is supplying the pseudo in this bleed. On super to uh, Cannulation of this uh, left gastric artery, we can see that is a contrast blush right in, in the area where the stent is placed. This is the runoff. We can see that is a contrast blush, and this was the active extravasation. Then a uh, coil was uh, placed in the branch of this left gastric artery. This is the this dot represents the coil. So we can see that the post-procedure uh, run shows uh, filling of the main left gastric artery and its branches. However, this branch which was, which was bleeding has been completely knocked off. So again, uh, a branch of the left gastric artery and not the main left gastric artery was uh, pilot. And this is the uh, run post-procedure. We can see uh, that the rest of the branches are filling and uh, only the branch which was bleeding has been knocked off. The complications and recurrence rates after conventional endoscopic cystogastrostomy gastrostomy compare favorably to the, that of the standard surgical approach. However, uh, there are complications which and uh, the most worrisome among them is the severe hemorrhage which was reported previously to be 5 to 15 percent. Uh, this high rate is due to the disease process which is going around due to the pancreatitis including formation of the pseudoaneurysms from extravasation of the pancreatic enzymes and the extensive extragastric collateral vessels are there and the patient may be a background cirrhotic patient with portal hypertension and splenic and thrombosis. These are things increase the risk of the bleed. However, with the introduction of the EUS, uh, there, were, there has been a decrease in the risk of the uh, bleed because on EUS the vessels are actively looked for and then a vascular zone is chosen for the stent placement. Though uh, it has decreased the rate of uh, bleeding but still cases may occur in 1-2% to 2 of the cases bleed may still occur and it has been documented in the literature. So if hemorrhage does occur and the endoscopic management right at the time of the endoscopy are later fails to control the bleeding, the options available with us is the angiographic embolization or the surgery. And of course the angiographic embolization is the first line of the management in these patients where there is also pancreatitis, necrotizing pancreatitis, work of necrosis and patient may not be absolutely fit for the surgery. In the angiographic embolization, the options again remain the coil embolization, glue and sometimes gel foaming we use a vascular plug. So in, uh, again, improvements in the hardware have made it possible to reach such small size vessels and to selectively coil them. Case 3. The case 3 is a 48 year old male using known case of necrotizing pancreatitis again, alcohol related and uh, he had undergone necrosectomy two months back. This time uh, the patient, uh, this patient present with the pain, abdomen and melina and when it was investigated that it was found that there is a drop in HP, so uh, active bleed was suspected. CT angio was performed and it was shown that there is a pseudo aneurysm right around the neck, around, around the head of the pancreas. So it is uh, again seen on the coronal images which is seen arising from the uh, pancreatic or arcade. 
Not in this case of uh, pseudo aneurysm, the supplying vessels are both from the superior pancreatic duodenal and the inferior pancreatic duodenal. So the difficulty in these cases remains that if we cannulate selectively and embolize, the aneurysm will fill from the other side. So the aim in these cases has to be to uh, offload both the, the supply, the superior as well as the inferior supply, so that the pseudo aneurysm is completely knocked off and doesn't fill again. We can see on these images that uh, it has been cannulated from its superior pancreatic uh, pancreatic duodenal branch. We have uh, taken a run, which is clearly showing the pseudo aneurysm. Then, through the pseudo aneurysm, the just inferior uh, pancreatic duodenal arcade has been cannulated, and uh, this has been uh, shown in the contrast run. And, uh, and the case was started with the coiling of the inferior pancreatic duodenal branches right uh, reaching from the superior pancreatic duodenal. So first uh, the supply from the inferior pancreatic duodenal was uploaded, then glue was injected into the pseudo aneurysm keel and while withdrawing the catheter while coming back, the coils were placed from the superior supply. So this is the poster and image, this shows a glue cast and the coils in the inferior supply as well as the superior supply. So the pseudo um, aneurysm was completely knocked off. These are the post uh, procedure CT and geographic images which show the pseudo aneurysm completely occluded and no contrast film is seen in the pseudo aneurysm. Uh, the distribution of the visceral artery pseudo aneurysms related to pancreatitis has been fairly consistent in the literature and are fairly common. Uh, with the splenic artery involvement most common, followed by the gastrodurinal or the pancreatic duodenal. Visceral artery pseudo aneurysms must be recognized radiologically because early treatment can improve the quality of the life and uh, prevent life threatening complications. Treatment of the visceral artery pseudo aneurysms is always mandatory because there is a high risk of rupture. And even small pseudo aneurysms, 2 to 5 mm, should be treated regardless of the diameter because the risk of the rupture for uh, pseudo aneurysms is very high and is not related to the size. So, this is a uh, uh, summary of the literature issues that uh, micro and uh, this transcriptor coil embolization has been a very safe and effective method and uh, so most often the first line of the treatment for treating the pseudo aneurysms. There are many studies which uh, prove their point. In uh, summary, uh, we can say that visceral artery pseudo aneurysms and bleeders present with hemorrhage, hemophilia, hypotension or obstructive jaundice. And there, um, the patients which are at high risk of rupture are the, when there is a rapid increase in size, there is portal hypertension, there is a high systemic uh, hypertension of the pregnant woman or there is very uh, aneurysmal inflammation or common hepatic artery or the pancreatic duodenal artery or caries involved. And note that the CT aneurysm size is not a determinant of the rupture. Diagnosis by CT angiography or catheter angiography and treatment options are surgical endoscopic or the endovascular approaches. In the endovascular treatment to the patient suitable for the aneurysm uh, rupture, uh, uh, patients suitable are those with, which have already ruptured pseudo aneurysm, and those patients are suitable, patients which are hemodynamically unstable can also be taken for endovascular management. And patients with multiple comorbidity are also can be taken for endovascular management. So, and the ideal candidate for those patients where both the inflow and the outflow vessel from the aneurysm can be cannulated well. In conclusion, I conclude with this that the advancement in the interventional techniques and hardware uh, as in endovascular treatment has become safe, effective and often the first line of the management for visceral artery and pseudo aneurysm bleed and has led to a decrease in the mortality and morbidity. Thank you.